Okay, so uh, one thing I'm interested in is doing remote development uh, over SSH, a uh, remote server using Visual Studio Code. And this is a relatively new feature of Visual Studio Code. At, uh, yeah, uh, right now they're touting WSL, but I noticed in the nightly builds, you've got uh, experimental support for ARM v7 L. This is basically a Raspberry Pi. So uh, the setup of that is uh, can be con can be is a bit more involved than just the click 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 of WSL. But um, I'd like to go through that yeah, in this show. So right now, uh, here's my uh, I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi. So Pi 192.168.0.4. It's asking me for my password. And you can see I'm running RetroPie here. I like this little banner that's, that it puts up. Uh, but it's asking, uh, in order to get this set up, you want to uh, set up a private key, sorry, a public key, and have that uh, appear in the authorized keys file on your, uh, on your Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go through the setup of that. So it's called SSH. Keygen. Uh, this utility is now available on the Windows on the Windows command line. Um, I'm just going to go with the defaults right here. Passphrase. It sets that up. So right now you can go to dot. Let's see dot. Sh and yeah, you want to. You can now open up the. Uh, your public key right here. So, code insiders say dot pub, and you want to do uh, yeah. There's multiple ways of getting your public key over to a uh, remote server, but right now I'm just going to SSH into it. So here's pi. And on, the, uh, on your remote side, you can. There's also going to be an SSH directory. If not, you can create one. And you will create a file called. Uh, it's called authorized keys. It'll be located here. And you're just going to paste in your public key. Files right. And in doing so, you can, uh, I've now exited out of the remote server. You should be able to uh, SSH into your remote system. And uh, it won't, uh, as soon as you do so, it won't ask you for your password. It's using the public key. So, after that, you can now install the Visual Studio uh, remoting tools. I'm going to go through that. So, here we go. There's, uh, there's a single large package that contains multiple uh, extensions Visual Studio Code Development Extension Pack. We're going to install that. And it's going, uh, since we need the uh, nightly version of, uh, of the, of uh, a few components. So here in this case, it's remote SSH. So we can remote, search for remote nightly. Okay, so I'm can't, you can't have the, both of them installed at the same time, so I'm going to uninstall Sage Nightly and uninstall uh, the equivalent for SH Explorer Nightly. 
No, I guess not. Okay, let's install that. They come together, and it's going to uh, yeah. We, let's uh, just be safe and restart our Visual Studio Code environment. So, develop a reload window. Okay, so now you see this bar appears in the corner. So what you want to do now is uh, you select Remote SSH Connect to Host. It's going to uh, pop up this window, Configure SSH Hosts, and give you a choice of multiple SSH file, uh, config files that you'd like to set up. Right now, these are completely blank. Uh, it's going to set ask you to set up your alias, host name, and user. Uh, in the case of my Raspberry Pi, I'm just calling it RetroPi. Give it the host name, and the user is Pi. So let's do that. One thing about this SSH config file is that it sees that. Uh, yeah, you see in the corner here it says SSH config, so it knows that uh, that it's not just a plain old text file. Uh, you do have like uh, tab completions. I'm uh, pressing Control. Um, sorry, uh, code completion. So I'm pressing uh, Control Space here, and you, uh, in some cases you'd be using like an identity file uh, that to specify your public key. But in this case it just seems to work with the uh, with this current setup right here. So in doing so, you have yeah, the installer, sorry, the extension gives you this new uh, remote set, remote setup uh, here. And you should be able to now just click here, collect a host and new window. And this is neat. So setting it, uh, setting it, setting it up and it's going to like download this uh, VS Code server ins uh, insiders onto the uh, Pi. So it, yeah, it's basically downloading a code server. It takes a little bit of time. The Raspberry Pi is not the fastest system in the world, but it works. Setting up SSH tunnel. And ta-da, here you are, SSH RetroPi, which means you're now, you can now open up an entire SSH shell and it's as though you were locally on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi, again, not the fastest system in the world. In this case, it's only got like a gig of RAM. Um, but here you have this heavyweight e uh, editing environment, you know, you running a Visual Studio code on a Raspberry Pi directly is, yeah, it's just not something that you would do. It's, uh, I mean, this thing can easily take in gigs of RAM, which I'll uh, have, uh, have a hard time with that. Um, the nice thing about it, so now you can go open up, connect to RetroPi, open folder. Uh, since I'm interested in Game emulation. I want to set up, uh, you know, mess with my RetroPie setup. Uh, instead of open up Windows Explorer, it goes through. The, it has this new open folder dialog. You click OK, and opens up a folder. It takes a little bit to connect, and here you are. Here's the uh, files that you manipulate directly. Um, one nice thing is that since this is, you also get code completion, you get, uh, since there's a lot, a lot of this is written in Python, you can search for anything.py, say joytiki.py, uh, you can install the extensions that would normally come with Visual Studio Code, but they will, op uh, they will be downloaded directly to the uh, remote system, in this case the Raspberry Pi, and operate uh, operate directly as though it were just local, which, yeah, that's definitely far out. You never see anything like that. It takes a little bit to install because it, you can see here, when you open up the 
extensions menu here. One moment. Okay, here's what I was looking for. The uh, you have uh, it splits out. There's the retro. There's the installed on the remote. Uh, the ex list of extensions installed on the rem on your remote, and it's uh, goes alongside your extensions that are installed locally. So reload required. I mean, right now, yeah, it's a, you can. Yeah, it's going to reconnect. Right now, what this is, uh, you would expect to do is like, okay, you're working on your Python script. You can um, you can r run it directly. You can set breakpoints. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can see uh, how does this work right right now. It's taking a bit. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on here. Linter pilot not installed. Here's the Python. Okay, let's ignore that for now. Uh, so how, how does this, where does this get installed to? It's a, a directory that looks like this, VS Code Server Insiders, which is where all your extensions be installed to. So if something gets messed up in any of the extensions that you have, you just delete that directory and um, there's no external registry or anything like that of uh, installed uh, extensions. You, just, you can just blow away your existing environment and rebuild it from there. So if you're playing around with nightly, uh, nightly components like this, you can, it's something that you might be doing now and again. Um, and as far as how is this is actually how this actually runs, I'm going to be running htop. That's a, a viewer of all of your uh, processes that are running. You can see over here. Yeah, it's running a bunch of uh, node processes out uh, out of this. Uh, VS Code Server Insiders. Um, it's actually a copy of Node 10. You can take this, and if you ran it directly, you would be a. Uh, you could see the version. It's a copy of Node 10. It's ra rather odd. It's a bit heavyweight for what you <laughs> uh, for what you would expect on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can see here taking up eight percent. Sorry, eight percent of the RAM here. Just a sitting idle running an SSH shell. It's already 237 megs. It's a full third of the RAM on the Raspberry Pi. So maybe you wouldn't want to have too many windows open. Okay, that's it. Um, hope this is useful. I'll be posting a few uh, link, useful links where I found this. Uh, this is really found off of Scott Hanselman's blog, but uh, it's good to take take you through uh, an actual install of this directly. And okay, well, have a good one.